Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Peyton. It is nice to meet you. It is nice to see you. In my time playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, which oh my god has been like over two years now, I have successfully completed four islands. Okay, that doesn't sound like that much, but if you play Animal Crossing, you know just how hard it is to actually complete your island. Since I've been streaming on YouTube, I've done two islands with you guys. I've done a European town core island, and I've done an all blue and yellow starry night inspired island. And now I'm working on my third one with you guys, which is a murder mystery island. Prior to streaming on YouTube, I also completed a non-theme, this was my first island ever island, as well as a city core island. A question I get asked a lot during my streams is, Okay, how do you actually finish an island? Like, how, how do you finish your island? And while I might not be the absolute best expert because I haven't finished 10 million islands, I do have some tips and tricks on how to actually finish your Animal Crossing New Horizons islands. That's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we get into the video, please be sure to click the wonderful like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already. We're inching our way to 4K and you could be a part of our crazy sloth family and be alerted for more content like this. This one. Let's get into the video. So before you can actually finish your island, you need to start your island. And I do have some tips on how to start an island that you can actually finish. First things first, I think it's important to pick a theme. While I think there are amazing, amazing islands that are no theme islands, or this is an every theme ever island, I think that if you're watching this video because you're stuck on finishing an island, picking a theme might be a really good option for you because sometimes when you do the no theme or every theme ever island, because there are so many options, it can get a little bit overwhelming and it makes you not really know what path to take to get to the end of the island. I would definitely recommend picking a theme. Now picking a theme is easier said than done. I understand. I have already made a video about seven different unique island themes you could try out. Out if you've already done the more common themes, you could absolutely check that out. But regardless of what theme you pick, I do have some general tips to make sure you're picking a theme that you can actually stick with. The first thing I recommend doing when picking your theme is to sit down and write out 10 different build ideas you have for that theme. If you can't think of 10 builds you wanna do, I think it's not a theme worth doing. And I think you may find some more inspiration with maybe another theme. No 10 builds could sound like a lot, but an easy way that I combat that issue is to think of builds for my 10 villagers. I personally think it's really easy and a really great way to fill space by dedicating builds to my villagers. Specifically, I like to have my villagers own small businesses on the island, or right now, in the case of my murder mystery island, I like to give them a bunch of backstory and include their backstory in the build. That way, you have 10 big spaces on your island already taken up, and from there, you might get inspiration on some other areas that you wanna work on as well. Do also have some general builds that I think can work for a multitude of themes. There are really great ones on Pinterest, YouTube, Discord, Instagram, Twitter, all of the social medias ever. I compiled a list of some general build ideas that I think you can do, whether you're doing kid core or abandoned dystopia or murder mystery or Starry Night Island, and I think they could work for all of them. So here are the ideas I came up with. Another important thing to think about when you're starting your island are what villagers you'd like for the island. Not just because I said, you know, that you can inspire your build based off of the villagers, but also if you have villagers you don't really like or you're just kind of meh about, you're not gonna feel as inclined to grab your switch and get on to designing. I personally feel like there is no better feeling than seeing your favorite villager do zoomies through your completed builds. So I feel like picking villagers that you like and villagers you'll be happy with for a while is a good idea too. Another thing I recommend doing before you actually start building is to map out your space. I personally don't map everything out to be exact because I find that to be a little tricky because I might decide later if I want a certain area to be bigger or smaller, but I recommend after you've written out what builds you have in mind, 
I would recommend doing a rough design of where you want each building and builds to go. Specifically, you're gonna wanna plan out where the in-game buildings are gonna go. So that's the 10 villager houses, the campsite, the museum, Nook's Cranny, and Able Sisters. You're gonna wanna make sure you pick where they go because the last thing you wanna do is work on your whole beautiful island and then realize you've forgotten about the ginormous museum that you gotta stick somewhere. So I always find it to be helpful to map out where you want those things to go first, as well as to just mark off big sections on where you want other things to go. It's an example from one of my islands that I've worked on. Of course, you could change your mind as you go along, but I think having just a basic idea of how you want your map to look like will help out a lot when approaching your builds. Speaking of maps, you do have another big decision as far as maps go that I think can help or hurt you in the actual completing your island process. That is the question of if you want to reset or flatten your island. If you're new to Animal Crossing, basically what that means is that you can either reset your switch when you wanna start a new island. Basically, you wipe the game data and you start from scratch. You start from that beginning loading screen. You're picking out the island you wanna to go to. You're getting starter villagers. You're trying to get KK Slider to come to your island. All of that stuff. Or you stay on the island you've already had but instead of resetting your game, you just pick up all your items and destroy the terraforming you've done and start with a clean, completely flat island. Personally, and I may be biased because I've never reset my Switch, but I think if you're noticing you're having problems finishing islands, I personally think flattening is a better way to go than resetting. Unless you don't like the layout of your map. If you don't like the general layout of your map, like where the airport is, where the river heads are, where the dock is, the things that you can't change with terraforming, then absolutely go reset. But if you like how your map is already laid out and it's just a matter of starting a new island, I think flattening is a better option. The main reason I think flattening is a better option is because of the items. The items, the items, the items, I think are everything when going into your builds. Personally, I have had so many times where I'm excited to do a build and then I open up my storage and I have absolutely nothing. And then I feel uninspired, I feel frustrated because I have to find all of the items I need and then by that point I'm not in the mood to build and the whole thing is just not fun for anyone. I personally recommend flattening rather than resetting so you could keep all of your DIYs, you can keep your storage, your catalog. If you play Happy Home Paradise, you can keep all of the items you've gotten through there. To me, having those items at my disposal is very, very helpful. Speaking of items, I think whether you decide to reset or flatten, making sure you pick what items you're gonna use for your island right off the bat and getting a lot of them is very important. Now, of course, you don't know every item you're gonna use on your island from the beginning, but I think it's important to think about some general items you may use throughout the island and get a lot of them. When I did my Starry Night Island, one of the first things I did was get a bunch of star fragments, a bunch of Nova Lights, a bunch of Crescent Moon Chairs, a bunch of telescopes, all of the stuff that I kinda knew I was gonna use a lot of makes it so much easier to build because when in doubt, you have those classic items that you've been using to kind of fill in spaces. Now picking out your items is great, but actually getting those items is another thing. And I think a big reason why you might be getting burnt out and not being able to finish your island is because you have to buy so many items. And if you're doing it the natural way, you only buy five items a day. And that takes a long time. So what I recommend doing is finding alternative methods to buy your items because that way you can get a lot of what you need and fast. I've talked about this before. I cannot talk about it enough. Personally, I use order bots for all of my items. I order bot before every stream like two to four times. I follow the exact steps that are in Taya's video, AKA Little Branches Crossing. I will go ahead and link it down below, but Taya has an amazing video on order bots. I use the exact same one that she uses in that video. Cannot recommend it enough. If you don't wanna use an order bot, you could also use Treasure Islands, which there are tons of free ones on Twitch and over here on YouTube. Well, as if you don't wanna do either of those kind of like spicy methods, there are some other community-based methods you can use to get items. Nook is on is a really great platform because it allows you to trade with other users and you'd be surprised at how many people are just giving items away for free as well as on my personal discord server on a lot of other creator servers and on just 
Animal Crossing servers in general. There are so many channels of people trading items, giving items away for free, just people happy to help you with whatever you need as far as items go. I think by stocking up on the items you know that you're gonna use, it's gonna make going into your build a lot less stressful because at the end of the day, yes, you're still gonna need to buy items that maybe you didn't realize you were gonna need or that you just decided you need more of, but having a base supply of the items you know you're gonna use a lot is gonna make your life a lot easier. Similarly to stocking up on items, I think also saving a bunch of codes before you get started is also a really great way to ensure that you're gonna complete your island. Because I personally find before I start an island, when I'm looking up codes for it, I find a lot of inspiration just in looking for the codes, rather than if you wait until you're actually doing the builds. Sometimes, as you're looking for codes, you see codes for things that you might not have intended to build, but then you're like, wow, this is a really great code for the detective's office in a murder mystery. Wow, maybe I should put a detective's office in my murder mystery island. Like, oh, I wasn't thinking of that. You know what I mean? So I think finding some codes you like beforehand can really add to the overall inspiration when you're going into working on your island. I love to find codes from Pinterest and Twitter and Instagram. I think those are really great resources. You can literally just type in Animal Crossing codes, or if you have a specific theme, you could do kid core codes, etc. Another really great resource I recommend is there's an awesome Discord server. Thank you to my friend Koi for giving me the information for this server, but they have so, so many amazing design codes and it has helped me a lot going into my builds. It's gonna be linked in the description down below. Another thing that I think can help with finishing your island is to set a timeline for yourself. While I don't specifically say, okay, I'm finishing this island by August 1st, I do have a general sense of when I'd like to be done with my island. I think by having a general sense of when you'd like to be done with your island is a good option because it'll push you to get to that deadline. Personally, the way I stay motivated is I think of what I'm gonna do after my current island. So by the time I'm like halfway through the current island, I'm getting really excited about whatever is next, and I think it's a good way to kind of keep you motivated. Also, I think it's really helpful if you like seasonal builds, planning out things by season is a really good idea, saying, okay, this is what I wanna do in the spring, this is what I wanna do in the summer, winter, and fall. I think that's a really good way to keep yourself accountable, and if you don't wanna work on one island for so long, having the four seasons as a general, easy time break to remember in your head, I think would be really helpful. That being said, there is no right or wrong time frame for an island, that's completely up to you. So if you wanna take a whole year on one island, that is absolutely fine. But just make sure if you're gonna take a long time on the island, I'd recommend planning out goals that you wanna have done by the end of each month. Otherwise, it may be hard to stay on track with a very long, year-long island goal. Final piece of advice is to share your island along the way. Personally, it has been through streaming, through making videos, through taking pictures and sharing them with you guys that it makes me feel so excited to complete an island because you're along the journey with me. So you don't have to make YouTube videos or stream on Twitch or whatever, but sharing photos of your builds, you know, having your friends come and visit your island, I think is such a great way to get that momentum because someone else has seen your island. So that way it's not just you having all these ideas in your head and you being like, oh, I really wanna finish this thing. Now you're sharing that experience with someone else and they wanna see you finish it as well. So I think sharing pictures of your island on Instagram, Twitter, you know, Facebook, whatever you do, I think is a great option, as well as playing with friends in real life or submitting your island for YouTube tours from streamers or just sharing in different Discord servers. Okay. Bonus, bonus piece of advice, even though this is an entire video based off of how to actually finish your island, you don't actually have to finish an island. There are no rules to Animal Crossing. You play this game however makes you happy, and there is nothing to say that you need to finish an island. It doesn't make you better or worse at this game if you finish an island or not. This is just for the specific people who want to finish their island before starting a new theme. If you really don't like what you've been working on and you feel like it's not giving you inspiration and keeping you motivated, start over, don't finish it, or maybe keep it and then just go work on another section in a completely different theme. And then you could go back to the other section and decide if you like it or not. Basically, at the end of the day, just play this game however is gonna make you happiest and that is 
that is all that one can do. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, once again, please give it a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. Leave me a comment down below what I'm missing. Let me know your personal tips and tricks for how you finish your islands. What is your process like? Everybody has a different process, so I'm interested in what keeps you motivated and what helps you actually complete islands. I think that's gonna be it for me, so thank you all so much again for watching. So much love, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!